Oh, hey guys. Everything sucks. And yes, I am back. So, see all this stuff? I already, I already, I already did it. I did this unboxing. And as I pressed stop at the end of the whole unboxing, I got this cool screen on, on the camera. Yeah, so I came to find out it recorded a whole whopping two minutes of the actual unboxing. And, uh, and, and that's it, and that's it. So we're gonna do it again, kind of. We're gonna go through everything. You can tell that my energy is low. Um, and I'm and I'm suffering a, a you know twentieth degree burn on my tongue from like seven thousand degree hot pocket filling. It said ham and cheese on the package. I'm pretty sure it actually was like ham and lava. But anyway, hi PETA, hi, thanks. You're very helpful there. So we have Barrel and Blade. I'm gonna show you the original two minutes of, of you know, so you can prove that I unboxed this stuff. So let's watch that original two minutes and then we'll carry on with Barrel and Blade, you know, Operation 86. Well, hello everybody. I am back and we've got the big BB box. It's not a, it's a, it's a good weighted box. Now, I gotta admit, last month, shotgun, not quite my thing, but everything in it found a very happy and loved home. So, let's take a look at what Barrel and Blade has for us in August 2024 in our level two box. And... Ooh. It's got this stuff. It's got this fiery stuff. I haven't seen it in a while, I don't think. For some reason. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. I don't know. Tactical Essentials. Ooh, 86. Tactical Essentials. That could be fun. Um, I kind of, you know, before we get everything out, this month we are pleased to bring you some awesome Tactical Essentials. Level 2 is based on a bag we previously featured in Level 1. Okay figure that out and received tons of requests for the death dealer tactical night stalker sling bag which i believe i was just talking about with with the gigs um let's see we love small bags blah, blah, blah. okay so customizing this bag into whatever so let's see everything that is in this box this would be a box for Peter kitty cat but Peter kitty cat is not in the room right now but what I am seriously going to do is I'm going to separate this into small little batches, put it into little containers, and this will go into the big fire starting kit area. Great stuff. So for those of you who don't know, Barrel and Blade comes in two levels, level one, level two. Level two usually comes in, comes with more stuff, um, more items than is in level one, and sometimes will include um, kind of the same stuff as in level one, but like like maybe the same kind of item, but like a better, more advanced, um, more valuable version of that kind of thing. So we'll have to see what we've got here. So I see in level two, one, two, three, four, five, six items. Uh, one, two, three in level one. And it looks like, yeah, so there's three more items in level two than there are in level one. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Normally I go right down the card and we look at everything. I'm going to skip that. And I'm going to start with something that's about halfway down the card just because purely I want to get it out of the way. I love Barrel and Blade. I've been loving it for years. But... That doesn't mean they don't have some stuff that I think is total crap in the boxes from time to time. I hate this thing. We've seen this in two or three different boxes now. I... Ugh. Yeah. Um... It's just not a great... I don't know. I've never... It's, I... Ugh. 
I'm trying to see if I can think of anything positive to say about it. Like, you know, do the old, how they taught us to do performance feedbacks with the, uh, the old compliment sandwich, you know? Say something good, say your negative feedback, end it with something good. I don't have any, any of the, I don't have any of the positive feedback to, uh, to sandwich with this. It's just, it's just all bad. This is just all, this is like, if this was one of my troops, I would sit it down and say, Key Knife, I want you to think seriously. Do you want our side to win this war? Yes? Then I highly encourage you to get out of the military. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. So the theory is you have a small, looks like a key. If you were to put it on your keychain at first glance, it just looks like a house key or whatever. Um, but then you open it up and you have a little backlock knife. It's got blade play. I've not seen one to this date without a significant amount of blade play. You can't do anything to adjust it. It's all pinned together. There's, there's no pivots to adjust, no screws to mess with. Um, it's not very high quality steel and it does give you a small blade to put places and it's only going to survive that first glance before somebody realizes it's not just a key i've just i've never been a big fan um this cut money is not going to work very well because it's already all wrinkled up but let's see I'm gonna blame it half on the knife, but um, also on the money, but still, even if I had like a good old piece of paper here to test that on, um, and you know what I will do, I'll even show you like, there's some 550 cord. Yeah, it's a small blade, but still it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's actually cleaner cut than I thought it was gonna be, I gotta admit. Um, just, I've never been a fan of this. I know there are people that like this stuff. This is not for me. The price on the card is $12. Everything on the card, by the way, MSRP prices, so let's get that out of the way now. I don't know. I don't like it. I've never liked these. Ah, SOG. SOG is totally hit or miss with me. More miss than hit, but it is what it is. So, all right. Now, the big thing they were talking about was the DDT Night Stalker Sling Bat. I think we have seen this once before, or not. DDT does make some pretty good gear. Um, I, once upon a time, made fun of them because I didn't really have any experience with them, but their gear is solid and does hold up. So I'm not a big sling bag fan, but I am surrounded by others that are. I don't know, I just, I don't really carry around anything this small. Um. I just, I don't know. I'm not going to get into that. That's not the point. This has a good weight to it. It's not overly heavy, but it's, you know, like sometimes you pick something up and it has just that weight that says, I've got enough material to be made well. You know what I mean? So it is just, I, I swear we have seen it. I don't know. So single sling bag one strap, but you can, can disconnect the strap completely, and then you can mount this in different ways. You can connect it to different other kinds of gear. Um, you can do just kind of like so. Here. I know, I can't remember where we've seen this, but I know we have, and that's what's kind of frustrating me right now, because I want to be able to say, remember when we saw this, and blah, blah, blah. So. Secure that down. Um, it could just. I mean, you could you could do various things with this. Um, and for those who do like this kind of bag, it's you know the quality on this is pretty good. God, I can't remember where we saw this. So I like the red lining for some reason. I don't know what it is I like about that. Same thing when I like those uh, the knife cases with like the bright orange lining. But you got your pals webbing on front for attaching some other stuff. Solid metal zippers. Got a very nice opening. 
uh, outer section over here. Connect keys or your little key knife or whatever the hell else you want over there. And some good elastic sections to connect stuff. So when they're talking about building an IFAC out of it in the card, and I don't remember if I read that out loud, but they mention it, definitely put some nice big uh, gauze rolls and stuff in there and little nylon separation. The actual um, like heavyweight, the, like the nylon um, that it's made of, good heavyweight nylon really feels like it's got some some substance to it not like that weak flimsy stuff this is passed through so you could either use this again to like you could take a roll of 550 and stick it through there and hold it there or you could use this to secure other stuff to it whatever you want a little bit of a patch panel here's kind of me total fold-out size that you have, which is not bad in a small bag like this, with more webbing on the sides for connecting whatever you want. And then internal, again, more of that red separator, and you've got some, some light weatherproofing, you can feel it, coating on there, on the back and the front area. Um, I don't know what you've got. I feel the, the weatherproofing on the front of here but I don't know, this just feels like this red lightweight nylon in between, so it is what it is. But you've got some drainage holes so that if wet, when this does get in there, it can drain out. And what do I feel like we, what is, oh no, that's the back pouch that I'm feeling. But some more separated areas inside. I do wish it opened up a little bit more flat, but a decent area for just walking around with some, I mean, again, building a trauma kit or just a little, uh, I don't know, a 12 hour hiking bag or something, you know? Now what I do like is that you've got even more stuff down here. You've got like a really nice padded area and then this mesh to let it breathe. But in the back, you've got some more cinching. You've got this is a whole like a whole velcro area so you can attach whatever you want to it um and this is let's see if i can get it out there come on so this can attach anywhere uh on the front um you can attach this to the velcro um you can have this again correspond to this path just through over there you can use this to attach more gear. You can use this separately. You can use this inside to attach gear in the end. So it's just a cool little, I know we've seen this somewhere before, and I just can't remember. Uh, so yeah, Operation 86 Tactical Essentials, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna move on. And you know, you're just gonna have to trust me. The best jokes I've ever made in the history of unboxings were in that first, that first take, so. Sorry you guys missed out. So we're talking about the pouch. We're talking about the first item, um, you know, the sling bag. Um, when when the fair maiden giggles did see it after I was all disgruntled and it was just like there, she slowly picked it up and started backing away and went, mine, mine. So yeah, um, she likes it. And she likes these kind of little bags and she's very particular about stuff. So if she likes it with all of its features, it's probably pretty good. They give it the you know MSRP value of $40. Remember, everything on the card is an MSRP value, but still nice. The next item out of the box is the, was the Lucy Pack Lantern. These things are always fun, these inflatables. So I have it inflated now, because I took it out of the box and it was flat. I will flatten it when we're done. But we've seen these things um, many times in many boxes from different companies. They may look a little different. They're all basically the same. Some are a little better than others. This one's not bad. I prefer the ones that are kind of like frosted because I think they, they, perform, they diffuse light a little bit better as lanterns. But regardless, they're all pretty good. So you got your LED lights in there. This can be used, so this one has a one single switch operation. You're just basically gonna go through all the modes. We've got a low, a medium, a high. We're about to do sort of a strobe, a flash, really. 
and then an off. This is a warm white light. I prefer a cool white light myself. I just find it to be more pleasing, better light, but that's me. These things are 100% waterproof, they float. Um, so not only do they float around, like you can throw them in the water. Uh, when the boys were younger, they used to like to take these in the bathtub, like they thought it was just so cool. But just to have light in a wet environment, in a storm, on a boat, um, nighttime fishing, or, or whatever, they're really good. You can use this, I'm gonna turn this big light over here off even though I'm still in a lit room, but. So you can use it directionally, you know, um, or you could just put it down like a lantern. And if I put the card here, you can see that it will give you light to read by and everything. Um, light on a table for you to do some, some close up work and stuff like that. Um, I forgot the exact number of lumens. I think it says here somewhere I think it's like 100 lumens. Sorry, 65 lumens. It'll last for uh, 24 hours on a single charge. What it does not tell us is uh, how long does it take to charge? So you have your solar panel up here, which is going to take longer to charge than if you were to plug it in and it comes with the USB to USB-C right here. So you can plug that in and charge it. This will not charge other devices. It doesn't have an output, but this is waterproof as well. And this handle is adjustable, so you can have it small uh, storage purposes, or if you just want a small handle, or you can put it on the largest and carry it around. So, um, you know, I like these things a lot. I find them to be pretty useful. They're great as lights, but the, uh, you know, uh, utility value of having them inflatable and waterproof is pretty good. $30, I'm sure you could find some, this or something just like it for less than that if you look around, but I love these things and I don't care how many of these we get in boxes, send them all, I love them, they're great. All right, moving on. Next item, the Cold Steel SRK Compact, Peter, you just almost impaled yourself. The Cold Steel SRK Compact Knife, $54. Okay, um, you know, we're gonna find this for less, somewhere. Here is the top of the box. We've got specs on the box. I gotta cover this up because the glossiness will make it almost impossible for it to focus on the specs. Um, is it focusing on the specs? All right. So we've got SK5 steel, which is a pretty good Japanese high carbon steel. A lot of Higo Nakamis are made out of that kind of steel. I like it for its purpose. We've got a, a black powder coat on there. I, I went into a little bit of detail about powder coat versus uh, a DLC or a dur um, not a Duracoat, a Cerakote. Why I would prefer one of those other ones. The big thing is a powder coat is a very good coating, but once it does scratch or chip, and it will with enough use, it allows rust to, um, especially on a high carbon steel, you can get rust under um, a, a broken surface of a powder coat. You are not gonna get that with like a Cerakote. Uh, it's just a different bonding process. Um, plus, I've never been a big fan of like the, the rougher texture of a powder coat. But anyway, it is what it is. It'll protect your steel pretty well. The bevels on this are just slightly uneven. Some people ask me still, even though I've explained it, why do I talk about that? Why does it matter? It's a degree of finishing. And if you, you gotta know that because when you go to resharpen your knife, you will expect to hold the same angle on each side of the blade. And if these are not at exactly the same angle, you're going to end up Rehoning or resharpening that blade unevenly, and you will not get the sharpest cutting edge possible. Uh, that's a topic for another for another day. But it's got a nice rubberized handle. I think I compared it to uh, I talked about the Ontario Spec Plus series earlier. How it's still a comfortable, you know, grippy rubberized handle. I do like that the Spec Plus has a has uh, kind of a thicker 
chunkier handle to hold on to. I find that to be a little more comfortable, fills out the, your hand a little bit better, but this is still pretty grippy, pretty comfortable. Um, the Spec Plus doesn't have this nice diamond kind of um, molded in texture, which gives it a lot of grip. The blade is out of the box. I mean, excellent. It just goes, and this, this cut money is a little humid and has been beat up quite a bit using it to dial in settings on the 3D printer. So the fact that it's doing so well on this floppy ass humid money is really good. Uh, get out of the box, really, really good. I did a little 550 cut with it. I don't know where it went. The rest of the 550 cord, but it did, did really well. Uh, injection molded plastic sheath. It is what it is. What you see is what you got. You could put a tech lock on this, but it comes with this little, little floppy guy right here. Um, interesting, it is just the friction of the rubber against the plastic that holds it in, and it's okay for now, but over time that will wear. So the snap is really important to keep that in securely, and it is pretty secure. Um, you can not really adjust this much, because that's not going to hold very well, but you can adjust it a little bit, and it does snap closed. But I'm, I'm interested in giving this a try. Um, SOG knives for me are very hit. I'm sorry, I, cold steel. Cold steel knives for me are a little bit hit and miss. I think that a lot of them are very overpriced, but there are some that I absolutely love. And I think the money's worth it. Um, is this worth $54? I don't know. I'd really want to take it out and, and see how it performs a little bit. But in terms of just the comfort right now and the steel, I think SK5s are really good steel um, for what you get. I don't want to go too far into the... Oh, I talked so much about the steel and everything last time. I just don't have it in me right now for a take two. Um, it's, it's a very good steel, uh, carbon steel. Holds an edge very well has good durability that's why he goes use it very often so i am happy with this though as an item i like it i'm really interested in seeing how it goes oh the next thing can go right directly uh and play hide and go fuck yourself uh it can go outside and play in traffic i hate it i've hated it every time we've seen it it is this uh sog key knife thing Actually, you might, you know what? I'm not even sure. You might have actually seen this in the other clip because I think I did it first just to get out of the way. I don't know how much actually came out on that first clip. I haven't rewatched it. I just sort of saw that it existed. Maybe you didn't see it at all. Um, this, these things to me just suck. So if you're watching this now, it's because it didn't come out on the other clip. It, it does kind of can blend as a, as a key on a keychain from about this far away, but as soon as anybody gets a closer look, it's pretty obvious it's a knife. It's a small little blade. None of the ones I've ever had did not have tons of blade play in it. It's... I mean, we just saw that even though this money is not up to great cutting specs, another blade did great, and this one sucks. Uh, what kind of steel is it? They don't want to tell you. It's just stainless. I, I, I don't respect these things at all. They give it a price of, what, $12? I would pay $12 to not have this. I would pay $12 for somebody to take this away. All right. Next, the white Schmog. I talked a lot about this. Um, so this is a Rothko. Rothko makes some pretty good stuff. Um, and we've gotten Schmogs and different colors and stuff. I did mention that mine um, already came pre-stained from whatever shish kebab somebody was eating with it on, which was great, which is awesome. I think we're all familiar and associate these with Middle East stuff. Um, so most, most often we think of these as like a clothing item, okay? Um, as a scarf or a head wrap in the desert. Why? Because it can protect you from sun and wind and dust. And that's why it's worn. <clears throat> However, this item has a lot of different versatility in it. Um, you can use it <clears throat> as uh, part of a water filter. 
um, you can use it. You can just make a little sack to carry stuff with it. Um, I, oh God, I went on such a tangent about different survival schools between the Army and the Air Force and having to make things in Air Force survival school, having to do sewing and <clears throat> how this would be um, something you could carry that would give you lots of material if you had to make things. How you could actually use the whole thing to make a small sun shelter. Like if you were somewhere and you just needed a little bit of environmental protection. Um, I also talked about how you could use this as a first aid item. Um, you could use it as a bandage to cover up a, a dressing, you know, a big bandage. You could use it to make a sling. What you also could do, <clears throat> excuse me guys, a little stuffed up here too. You could actually use this to make a semi-rigid splint. If you were to take something like this and put a stick, a um, couple sticks in it, and then fold it up, you could actually splint a long bone or even uh, a joint with it, you know, and, and so there's a lot you could do with it. You know, I'm just rattling off a few ideas. Um, so it's not just a fashion statement. Um, you don't just, you know, put it on your head and say, look at me, I'm a terrorist. Um, you could do all sorts of stuff with this, um, including keeping yourself cool in the desert. So, you know, uh, $12, and again, OD green, I've seen them in black, seen them in white, seen them in khaki colors. Great to have because of the nature of the fabric, fabric, which is kind of a cheesecloth type fabric. So the uh, permeability of the, of the fabric is really good for a number of different survival outdoors related things, but it also lends itself to doing a whole lot of other stuff too. So I'm not upset about getting another one of these. And it being white, I can dye it any color I want. Um, and then the final item in this box, and yes, I am going very quickly because, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have another card error and I am exhausted. So, <clears throat> single point sling from Voodoo Tactical, $15. Boy, did I go on a whole long thing about Iraq and Afghanistan and the Ugandan guards on the main bases in Iraq guarding chow halls and other on-base facilities and rifles and the difference between sling arm arms and reverse sling arms and why you have to reverse sling arms when you go into the chow hall and all sorts of stuff and and single point slings being very dangly on your legs and oh my god all kinds of stuff so it is a single point sling here's where it would hook up and then this goes to protect that little hook um i told a cool war story as to why i like the features on this i might tell that real quick but so we've got some pretty strong bungee in there to help this not just bounce around and bang into the back of your legs, which it can do, or the front of your legs, depending on how you're wearing it. Um, <coughs> short version of the story. Once upon a time. So no shit, there someone else was, because I wasn't there, but this is a story that, that's real. Um, in Afghanistan, had an Air Force HH-60 that crashed. Not didn't crash, sorry, did, that was the point. Didn't crash. Hard landing in brownout conditions. Those things can take a pretty hard landing, but... This one uh, took a particularly hard landing, <coughs> uh, suffered some some structural damage uh, to the right-hand side, also known as starboard side in aviation uh, terms. Um, the crew on board is is a pilot, a co-pilot, a flying crew chief, an aerial gunner, and two or three pararescue men PJs on board whenever they fly around and do their stuff. Uh, one of the PJs who are like, I'll have to explain PJs later, but they'll fuck you up real quick, but don't worry, they can put you back together in a heartbeat ever they fuck you up real quick. Um, had single point sling type thing going on. Um, his rifle, and in the, in the course of this crash, got like grappling hook wedged into some of the, you know, what was once a nice smooth aircraft fuselage wall was now splintered and, and, and bent up and his rifle was now kind of stuck uh, in among the wreckage. So as he tried to make a quick exit, hasty exit out of that aircraft, he found himself now like kind of roadrunner type, you know, Coyote tried to jump, but like was thrown backwards. Um, and in a panicky situation like that, you don't know if that aircraft's gonna explode, catch fire, uh, what's gonna happen. Cause you know, the, the, the PIC, the pilot in command calls bail and you know, you just, yeah, the, the guy in charge of the aircraft said, jump the fuck out, so you get out. 
Um, it was a different type of sling that didn't have these quick releases all over it. It's, this was, anyway. And so he has all his other gear on. It's not so easy. Number one, it's in the middle of the night. It's dark. Night vision, op, you know, optics and shit aren't just right in front of your face because you didn't have them on to begin with because you're sitting in the back of the helicopter not expecting it to slam into the side of a hill in brownout conditions because, you know, visibility went to hell. Anyway, um, so it took him a bit to realize what the cause of the problem was to get the the single point sling off from his body, which was then, you know, kind of mixed up with some other gear, um, and to safely exit that aircraft. He actually just left his rifle behind, which he then had to go retrieve because we, you know, you don't just leave a weapon behind. But anyway, one of the so I tell you that whole story to say some of the features I really like about this single point sling, even though I am an old school, old fart, I like a, a three point sling for reasons I explained clearly in the other video. But this gives you three quick release options if you need to dump this in a hurry. You've got one connected right where your rifle's going to be, and you've got two up where your body is at any given point. So in the event that you have an issue where you need to uh, dis detangle yourself from any kind of situation or for whatever reason you need to disconnect from, from your personal weapon in a hurry uh, for tactical, operational, or safety reasons, this gives you three quick, quick options to do that. And that story is just, there's all sorts of, when we talk about ORM, and, and, and CRM and all these safety things like the, the, the briefings you get all the time. That's one of those ones that's told over and over as, as a, uh, in, in the history, there's a series of, of the, you know, what to do stories that are always told. But first thing I thought of when I saw these clips on this, uh, on this sling. So I'm not a big fan of single point slings for a number of reasons. Number one, I feel like I just have I have pers better personal control of my weapon with a three-point sling. Other people I know for a fact feel like they have better, better um, tactical control and maneuverability of the weapon on a single-point sling, especially when they're doing close quarters uh, combat stuff. Um, but for me, in my experience out in the field, I feel like I control where that weapon moves when I don't want it to better or more more to the point I have better control of that weapon not moving places when I don't want it to with a with a good tight three point sling but that's neither here nor there we can discuss that at a later point um I know that single point slings are the, are the hottest newest thing and that's kind of kind of the standard now I guess um and this is a fairly good one Voodoo Tactical makes really good stuff and I you know, I like I like a lot of what they make. So, so that is everything in this level two box for Barrel and Blade for August twenty twenty four. All right. As always, because I love Barrel and Blade, um, I have a link in the video description. It's not an affiliated link or anything. You can just go there and check them out. I find myself recommending Barrel and Blade when people are looking for subscriptions because I've been with them for so long. I have good faith in them and everything. If I have spent my own money there so much, I feel comfortable throwing that link in there. You'll notice there are times where I do put links in places. There are some times where I, I tell you this is an affiliated link, or there are times where I just don't put a link at all. But there's always a link to Barrel and Blades, so you go check it out. So anyway, there we go. I got it done. Good Lord willing, this video, <laughs> the, the card works and this video is done and well, I mean, if you're watching it, it has worked. So what do you guys think of the items in this box in Tactical Essentials? I feel like there are some other tactical, there are essential tactical things I would have put in here besides maybe this and this. Um, if we're talking Tactical Essentials, maybe a different kind of bag than a sling bag. But again, as a little tactical sling bag, as a small little, little bag you can use for little tactical accessories, it's not bad. I'm really looking forward to trying out this knife. And you know what? I'm going to give this a chance over at the range. I'm going to try it out and see how it does for me. Um, wherever the hell this thing landed, I'm not even going to look for it. I'll stumble upon it when I'm cleaning up, and then I will just fucking cunt punt the tiger and hopefully never see it again. 
Hi guys, I hope you had a fun time. <laughs> I, need, I need a break. So tell me what you guys think of this box. I'm, I'm really curious. I'm happier with it this month than last month because it was all shotgun. I think I, listen, it, that's been covered in the other intro if it exists, so. Just let me know what you guys think of this box. Favorite item, Leaf's favorite item, better than last month, not better than last month. What do you think? Thanks for spending a little bit more unboxing time with me. I really hope that this worked out and you guys got to see a video. Remember that you guys are all absolutely awesome and I appreciate every single one of you. My tongue still hurts and I'll be back again real soon.